Can you please introduce yourself and SureComp? Sure. Well, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, my name is Enno Weitzel, and I have the pleasure to oversee strategy, digitization, and business development at SureComp. SureComp itself is the leading global provider of trade finance software, uh, both for banks and corporates. Um, and serving our customers to us means providing the most relevant solutions so that they actually can focus on their business. Thank you. And so what's the biggest IT challenge in trade finance? Uh, well, that's a very fair question. And um, what I think our clients, they need to do business here and now. Yet at the same time, they need to prepare for the future. Um, and this challenge, um, to our perspective, is threefold. So um, while banks typically run legacy IT systems that are in operations for many years, second, regulators are putting an ever-increasing burden upon banks um, to comply with ever-growing regulation. And third, the fintech space is too atomized so that banks and corporates can get an overview to it. Now, if we run through this a little more deeper through these three key challenges, um, starting with the legacy topic of the banks, um, the systems that are in operations for banks typically have been installed a decade or so ago. Um, and this holds true not only for the core banking systems, but also for the trade finance systems. And it's similar at most of the corporates. Um, and these systems are, say, spaghetti integrated to various up and downstream systems in the bank and corporates. So changing these IT systems to make them fit for today's and tomorrow's world is both costly and risky. Um, and banks are facing a margin pressure because new entrants are coming to the play that provide finance. And today finance is cheap because liquidity is just uh, ample in the market. Um, and without margins to make profit, there's little budgets to update the IT. So this is all around the banks have an issue with their legacy IT systems. And if that wasn't, say, uh, difficult enough, now comes the regulator that is increasing the regulatory burden on banks. Um, so banks have to keep up with fighting on uh, money laundering, with controlling for sanctions and embargo uh, circumventions. Um, and banks are an easy target for this because all transactions are running through the books of the banks. So if regulators or uh, states want to control this, they simply have to go to the banks and then they have the multiplier. Now banks aren't refunded for this, so they have to somehow uh, uh, finance this on their own. However, it is if they want to update or uh, enable their systems to do so, you have to work on basically every field of the IT systems. Now you might think that fintechs provide solutions to this, because if you look out there, um, there's a fintech to solve any kind of problem. However, that, that is also part of another problem set because, and that is the third element, the fintech space is too atomized. Um, the, the fintechs, they tackle the whole value chain and identify one single step of the value chain and solve that problem. Now, actually, they provide a technical solution for this problem um, because they, they apply technique, and which is a great idea, don't get me wrong, but from the point of the user, so both banks and corporates, this is just adding another problem because then to cover the full value chain, you'd have to deal with 20, 25, 30 different fintechs to provide a working say, environment. So this is too complex. It's too costly to get informed on who's providing which service and who's doing what, how to integrate. Um, and so eventually, while there are potential solutions out there, they don't come into active play because the implementation costs are simply too high. Thank you. That's great. And uh, so next question is, what can SureComp do to overcome this? So at SureComp, we, we truly focus on the customer use and the use case for the customer. So we don't want to provide the best idea out there just on its own because we think it's not sufficient, but we want to provide solutions that actually solve the problem of the corporate or the bank. And in this, we have three different say, sets of solutions. A, we provide an API connectivity. We provide trade finance as a service, so cloud-hosted trade finance systems. And we offer a fintech marketplace 
And together, this provides a holistic set of solutions to both corporates and banks where they actually can overcome the current uh, imperfections of the systems. Thank you. So you mentioned that the first solution is the API and the API is all over the place and uh, everyone is using it. It's so convenient. And how is your API different uh, offering? The API offering is different. Yes, indeed. API is all over the place. You, you can't read any article on any fintech or any innovation without um, all the buzzwords being mentioned, at least in, in one sentence. Uh, so what we did in, in, in API Sure, uh, which is our solution, which was launched back in 2019, we again were focusing on the current situation of the banks. Now this is directed to the banks. So um, they have a back office system. So just to get it right, what does a back office system do? It, it is processing all the transactions and managing the risk limits at the banks, the uh, uh, ledger information so that a bank can actually um, process all these trade finance transactions. Now, as we, discussed already, these systems are rather old. So unless a bank is updating the system, and we've also discussed the, the challenges within this, um, they somehow have to just put an add-on to the system to make use of the whole API environment. And that's precisely what we do with the API Sure. So this is an add-on, so to say, think of it as a connector between the outside API world and the bank's back office system for trade finance. And so banks don't have to upgrade their system. They simply have to put this add-on to, and yet they can make the full use of the API, say, world out there. Now, to make this a bit more tangible, just let's discuss two very simple examples. Um, banks need to declare the goods in a transaction in the form of a so-called HS code for customs. Now, typically, this HS code information is not provided in a transaction. Well, a transaction simply says this may be closed, but you need to provide an eight-digit HS code to the customs authority. Now, there is a fintech out there, or there are various fintechs out there, that provide a very small service. So you provide a, a text string that says this is closed, and the API microservice will provide back an eight-digit code with the HS code for, for customs. Now, this very simple API microservice can automate a manual step at the bank because currently this is done by manual lookup of a human operator in a website entering this, this is closed, into the website, and the website will provide back uh, the, the eight-digit HS code. And with this small step, you can automize processes at banks, but this is only possible if the bank can consume API microservices. Now, another example, I mean, just recently, we've all learned about the importance of ships in uh, global trade, yeah? um, vessel tracking. Banks need to check where vessels are going and whether they are going to, say, forbidden waters, uh, depending on where the bank is and which uh, regulatory regime applies to the bank. Now, again, how do banks currently do this? Well, there's a human operator that runs uh, a website and he goes to there are various websites that provide this service. Um, and again, you could have an API um, that simply says, this is the ship number or ship name that I want to track. Um, the API service provides the result back, and there you are, you have the solution. These are small automization steps that allow uh, upgrading the process because all of a sudden you have um, a, an audit trail proof of which information was checked at which time um, because it's all digital instead of manual. Um, and you can automize so banks can save cost. And again, this is only possible if they can open up this API space at low cost due to this simple add-on. Yeah. So this is what we mean with API. And therefore, we think this is um, as it's directed to the customer, to the corporate, uh, to the bank um, and, and customer oriented. Um, this adds value in, instead of just opening up a new problem area by, by just using buzzwords. So. Thank you. I think it has been very popular to have a product as a service recently, and uh, you recently announced the bank using your uh, trade finance as a service. Can you tell us more about that, please? Yes, sure. Um, but today, most of the um, uses, the, the services that we consume as a consumer are cloud-based. Now think of your online banking, your music streaming, your online learning. This is all cloud-based. None of us has 
an on-prem installed software on a computer. For corporates and banks, however, as we've uh, discussed uh, uh, recently, the reality still is that they all have on-prem installed systems. Um, now, a cloud offering um, allows to enjoy the full range of features. So you have no fixed cost for infrastructure and maintenance. You don't need to have a team up and running that is focusing on maintaining and running um, uh, the daily operations of this IT system. But you can focus on your core business, be it steel importing, oil trading, cotton manufacturing, whatever it is. It's definitely not dealing with the trade finance IT system because this is our job, not the job of our customers. And you always have the most recent version. Now, when you log into your music stream, you don't care which version that music streaming website currently has. It just works, right? So you can focus on what you want to do on that website, which is, I'd like to listen to music. Um, and yet again, and this is something that is very important for corporates and banks alike, it's fully scalable. So we've seen this unprecedented downturn of economy last year. Has any of the cost of their IT systems rescaled for the corporates and banks? No, it's not because it's fixed. When we're using cloud systems, well, you pay as you go, right? You have 10,000 transactions, you pay 10,000 times the price. If you have only 1,000 transactions because the economy is going down, well, then your, your costs are going down too. Uh, so this is um, just one dimension. However, we know that across the jurisdictions that corporates and banks are in, it's very, say, different, if not to say difficult, uh, to implement cloud-based systems. And there are high requirements from regulators to it. So think of corporates in sen sensitive areas like healthcare. Would we all be perfectly happy if that corporate is implementing a cloud-based system and our data are, are on a cloud that we don't control or we don't trust? Think of defense corporates you know, that are in the defense space. We might not want that these data are on the cloud. Banks, I mean, needless to say, uh, it's difficult. But we know and we see that there is movement in the market. Now, at Showcom, we have deep understanding of so, such situation. Um, and we have a range of models to account for this and to cater for the very specific situation that is with an individual corporate or a bank. Um, and just to name three of them, it ranges from hybrid models to have some pieces like databases to uh, touch the most sensitive piece of it, have databases on-prem, and all the services, all the features, functionalities consumed from this on-cloud web-based service. We are easy in maintaining various cloud models from a corporate-run cloud, private cloud, through public cloud. Um, so, for example, for a very large industrial conglomerate, we run a corporate cloud. So, they make use of part of the service. So, they don't care about the IT team that is necessary to run this. This is what we do. But they still because it's given for their conglomerate situation, they still want to have it within their control, so not a public or a private cloud from a, say, uh, one of these big cloud providers. And talking about the cloud providers, uh, we have um, collaboration experience with all three of the big ones, like Google, AWS, Microsoft, so we are perfectly easy to work with either of them. So this is what we mean by we are we put ourselves in the shoes of our customers and wherever our customers are, we have a set of solution that is um, designed to actually solve their, their situation. We've provided that service across various regions from Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand in Asia, through continental U Europe, um, across Africa to South, uh, South America. And, uh, that was where we just um, had this one bank that is uh, starting now with this uh, trade finance as a service. Um, um, and so these solutions allow to consume just that much service that is actually used by the client. The uh, um, example that I've just provided um, that scales back if your business is scaling back and that provides full stable scalability if your business is going where it should go. 
Thank you. That's perfect. And lastly, uh, what is uh, Surecom offering on its marketplace? Uh, what's the idea around this and who are you targeting or addressing with it? Um, yeah, thanks for this uh, question. Our, our FinTech marketplace is uh, truly something unique in the, the trade finance uh, IT market. We're supporting banks and corporates to overcome the challenge to inform, identify, and select the best fitting fintech for its very specific purpose. We're doing the pre-selection of the fintech. So for example, we have reviewed some 400 fintechs. What do we look at? We look at the terms of functional value add. So what is it exactly that they bring? Because we all know this, some fintechs are very good in marketing. And if you scratch on the surface, then the actual value add may be, say, limited. Um, we, we look for the easiness to integrate so that the solution, the value add that is provided, comes also at an say, easy technical uh, level to digest for the corporate and bank. Um, and we look on this contractual relationship uh, to, because, again, we want to make it as easy as possible for the corporate or the bank to actually consume the service and not come with, say, overboardingly legal administration. Now, this offer that we provide ranges across various, uh, say, uh, um, uh, dimensions. It's on compliance, fraud prevention, data management, shipping solutions. Um, we offer price comparison, risk management tools. So actually covering the full value chain that a corporate or a bank uses when being active in trade finance. Now, the beauty not only lies in the offering that we have, but also in the easiness to consume this. So once they are with us, um, they can easily extend the current range of services that they uh, consume from us with these add-on fintechs from the marketplace. And again, maybe to make it more tangible, just a few examples of this. Um, when a corporate wants to have a guarantee for its uh, basic business and um, an import and export, um, but they can, for example, do price comparison. There's one partner on a, a, a marketplace that provides to compare prices for um, guarantees and uh, proposes a bank that offers for its very transaction the best price possible. Or banks can strengthen their compliance processes by making use of our AI-based verification tools that are on the marketplace. And again, this, is, this all comes with easy integration, We've done the groundwork and heavy lifting so that now the user of the marketplace is just enjoying the advantages of this. Thank you very much, Renan. Thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here.